So Zach Cooper, congratulations on It Happened One Weekend, your movie at the Heartland Film Festival, uh, where we are. I'm at a hotel room, the Hyatt downtown at the Heartland International Film Festival. I love Indianapolis. I've never been here before. It's so awesome and you make it look so beautiful on screen. Why did you decide to stay here? You've lived in Indianapolis for six years. You're from Kentucky. Why did you decide to stay here instead of like waiting to move to New York or LA or whatever to make films? Yeah, that, I mean, it's still something that I have existential moments about for sure. But uh, I stayed here because like I have, one of the things that brought me here initially was I have some friends here who I went to film school with. They just happened to find themselves here uh, and nothing else going on. It's like, sure, I'll hang around for a year, you know, and then figure out my life. And so I've been here ever since. And I've stayed because because of those friends and then the connections that we've made. And um, there is a good film community here. It's small, but everyone's always down to help out in whatever way they can. And so, you know, it, sometimes, yeah, you think about moving to the other cities, you know, the, the ideas of more opportunities and stuff. But it's like, I know how to make stuff here. And that's what's most important to me is being able to make stuff. Your, your crew obviously knows really what they're doing. Your actors know what they're doing. You can come up with an idea and put something together pretty fast. How fast did you put this together? Um, well, the, we were going to shoot before COVID. So I mean, we didn't know COVID was a thing, but we were going to shoot March of 2020. Obviously that didn't happen. Um, it would have been a way worse film if we did. I think we were, we were rushing it because my DP, he actually lives in Brooklyn, but he was about to have his first kid. So we were like, let's just make something. Let's make a feature we've always wanted to. And so I was really rushing it. Then COVID happened, which was awful. But the good thing was that it made us slow down and gave me plenty of time to work on the script because I couldn't do anything else. Um, and so that was that was a big um, a big boost for us and and really let us meet some other people and bring more people on board who could who could help us out. So I think if we would have shot when we wanted to shoot, it would have been rushed. It would have been bad, but that, that was a big learning experience of like, okay, just take your time, get the team that you need. Um, and so, I mean, I guess it took about like a year and a half to put together technically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, but we shot it in 14 days last September. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It Happened One Weekend is about, I don't want to call them a couple, but a male-female friendship. Um, who maybe should be a couple. And they talk a lot about whether they should be a couple and what to do. There's allusions to when Harry met Sally. And of course it happened one night and a lot of other great rom-coms. Um, and the characters are very creative people who are doing jobs to kind of pay the bills that they don't necessarily love, but they don't hate either. And it enables them to do what they really love. What you said about your DP, waiting to, until your DP had a kid to shoot the movie. Your character in the movie talks about how he's not going to make his movie until his DP has the kid. So how autobiographical is this? Uh, you know, I think that was a line that I just, I don't, I wasn't thinking about it when I wrote it, but then he's watching, you know, obviously he's, he shot it and he's seen the movie and DP was like, Oh, that's about me. And I was like, I guess so. But I never thought, I think I was just more, I have other friends who are filmmakers who have kids. And so that I don't have kids. So it just, it was pulling from that autobiographical aspect of, um, you know, watching your friends have different lives and being like, you know, uh, like what's what's the right thing to do, what path to follow, and and also kind of living in the consequences of what your friends choose to do, right? If your friends have kids, they're a little less available, and so just dealing with the the aspects of being an adult and trying to follow your dreams. I've seen comparisons between this movie and Manhattan, um, and obviously the black and white style, you know, calls up that comparison too. The thing about Manhattan is no one is ever going to shoot New York again as well as Gordon Willis did, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but I've seen New York a billion times and I've seen them, so many people try to do it. I've never seen anybody try to do it with Indianapolis. And you make the city look so beautiful and like such a just great playground to work out your life in. And, you know, I walked around yesterday and it really is that beautiful. I mean, the canals, the buildings, the monuments, they really are as cool as they look on film. Do you feel like there's a big advantage to shooting somewhere that hasn't been just overshot? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, um, the, you know, what, what you were saying about it looking really beautiful is, you know, it's easy to take the compliment, but it's also like, I think it's just because people haven't seen it on film, right? Like you're not used to it. I mean, I've I filmed other things in the city before and people have said the same thing, which is lovely to hear, but it's like, I think part of it is just seeing on the big screen. Like it's just not something that we're used to. So I think there is, um, you do get, 
a lot of uh, mileage out of shooting at a place that has not been shot to death. So how did you put this together? I saw you did a seed and spark for about $15,000 to crowdfund money. We used seed and spark and went with them because um, I knew that they were, you know, they're very focused on like film and TV. So a lot of the other like Kickstarter, uh, Indiegogo, all those are like very much just like whatever you want to do, you can raise on here. And so um, knowing that there was support for just film projects was like a, a big benefit. Um, so we, we put that together and obviously 15,000, is not a lot, you know, it's not really how you make a movie, but we knew the favors we could call in and we knew um, the people to ask to help out. And so we kind of just scrapped it all together and made it happen. Interesting. There's another movie making the festival rounds called Chrissy Judy by a filmmaker named Todd Flaherty. That's a gay rom-com, gay platonic rom-com. That's also pretty influenced by Manhattan and it does a lot of the same things for $20,000. So if you look at a movie like this, not that you guys have like a genre, but I feel like a movie like this that sort of is referencing some of those 70s classics can be made not that expensively if you have the right crew and the right talent and the right vision and the right technology. Um, what did you shoot this with? How did you edit it? How did you, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. So we, we partnered with, uh, there's a, there's a production company out of Bloomington, Indiana called Pegasus Pictures. But they also have this like offshoot of theirs called the Pegasus Institute, and they teach classes and courses and stuff like that. And they have some gear that's available to filmmakers for either free or cheap. Um, and I think it's a resource a lot of people aren't aware of that exists. But uh, one of our producers uh, is friends with some of those people, so we got that contact, and so they loaned us their um, their LF package uh, and some lenses and everything. I mean, it was a huge, huge help um, because uh, we really wanted to shoot it on a camera of that caliber, not that you have to, but um, my DP is, is familiar with RE cameras. And so I, I just felt like if I could get him one, he would be the most comfortable, which would free him up. Um, that is a big ass camera. I wouldn't suggest using that uh, if you don't have to. It worked with what we wanted to do, but um, so we thankfully got that from them and, and some glass and all the other gear that we needed, borrowed and rented some other lenses from people in town as we needed to. And then um, I edited this myself on Premiere, just on my laptop basically. And uh, and uh, we worked with a colorist as well to uh, really kind of hone in the look that we wanted. And uh, his name is Connor Jones. He's local, he's great. And he, he really helped us out for not nearly as much money as he should have been paid. When we talk about your music, your music is really good in this movie. And I think it's largely driven by one person who's pretty mm -hmm. local. What's the story there? Yeah, her name is Mina Cohn and she is a, a local musician and uh, she's a friend of a friend. And I mean, she just blew it out of the water. I, like I gave her some inspiration of some like 60s Italian pop and 60s French stuff that I that I was just listening to because I thought it really fit the film and it was really fun. And she really took that and ran with it. And, you know, there's a song in there that she translated into French. It's like a song about Indiana. And she just, which I didn't know she's going to do that. And then she also translated it to French, which I didn't know, but I was like, this is really awesome. Is there anything you learned in the process of making it happen one weekend that you think would be universally helpful to any filmmaker anywhere, no matter what level they're at? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think a part of what I try to do is, I'm all about trying to find ways to like repeatedly make things. So it's not necessarily just about like blowing all your money on one project and hoping that that works out. It's, it's about working within your resources. And sometimes you have to obviously spend money and stretch yourself a little bit, but it's all about finding ways to work with the resources you have mm -hmm. and working with your friends. And, um, and I think that's just the way, I mean, a lot of people are doing that and it's great. And I think it's just, you gotta just, keep that up it's like you always got to encourage each other that I think it's easy to feel like it's easy to feel like you're not getting anywhere and I think if you have that community around you to encourage you and to help you I think that's so important and helping others too like making sure that you're not just the one always asking for favors like stepping in and helping out wherever you can